Welcome to Brayburn Live. I'm Brian Bistrong, your chef and host. It's been a while. We're back. Restaurant week is winding down. It's been good to us. Hope some of you enjoyed it. If not, still you can come. So today we are making steak. We're doing a strip loin and I'm going to show you how to break one down. Not that you would probably do this at home, though you may, um, but to show you where the meat comes from. And then we are going to saute it instead of grill it since we're indoors and, and don't have a proper uh, grill. So what I have here, this is a beef strip loin. This is a uh, black Angus. This has been uh, started on grass. It, it, um, its diet was grass fed and then finished on corn and grain. So you hear all different things about different kinds of beef and it's really up to, to you, the consumer, what you like. I mean, the biggest thing is to know where your, any of your product is coming from, whether it's vegetable, pork, beef, chicken. Um, but uh, it's a matter of taste, whether you like grass-fed or the grain-fed. So what you have here, the strip, you have the cat, a little bit of the tail. You can see it here, the rest of the meat. So what, what I like to do is when you get a steak at Brayburn, you're getting the steak. There's not a whole lot of fat on the meat. So we're going to take this and cut the tail off. Okay? I save all of this. I use it for family meal. I use it for sauces. So, so don't throw anything away. You trim all the meat off of it. And there's a little bit of sinew on the bottom. And I'm just taking that off. You can see that. So basically you have a strip fat free on the bottom. And then we take the cap off. You have two sides of the strip. You have the end piece which has the, a lot of uh, cartilage and sinew in and you have the nice, nice red where the more prime cuts come from. And from this end it naturally comes off and you're left with basically the silver skin. Okay, so I'm taking this off. It doesn't have to come off in one piece. Well, this I don't use. This is garbage. Okay. And then you have this silver skin. Again, I take it off. Some people like it, you know. I find it a little tough. So when you come here, your meat will be nice and trim, okay? There you have that. Now, still have a bit of the chain. Again, I take the chain out. And with anything, it's almost natural. You can kind of see the lines on meat. Meat is much more forgiving and, and easier to, to butcher than fish. So I keep this. That does have meat on it. There's your clean strip. So get about a 10 to 12 ounce portion. See that? And that's what you get at the restaurant. Nice, big piece of meat. Okay? Here's another one. You can see, I'll show you on the end, which is not so desirable. I tend to use it for family meal. It's the end piece. And there's cartilage and tendon going into there. Not desirable. So, anyhow. There's your strip. Now what we're gonna do is get it ready. So, kosher salt. You can be fairly liberal with that. You know, it's nice to have a good salty piece of meat, glass of red wine. And pepper. You have a saute pan getting nice and hot. We, we preheated this. Canola oil. A 
nice and hot. And you're going to sear this. And that's what you want to hear. You want it nice and seared on the first side. So we're going to turn it around, sear it on that. And then we're going to baste it with butter. We're going to put some aromatics in there. Now what I've done to make time go a little bit quicker, I started one just earlier, same exact way what you're seeing right now. And I have it in the oven cooking. This is, it's probably been in, it's been in basically since we've been doing this demo, so probably almost five minutes. Can you see that? And what I put in here is some butter, some garlic that I crushed, some thyme, and I basted it. And this has been in there for about seven minutes. See this one, it's starting to smoke, it's okay, because you want that good hard sear on it. Still have some more time. This, sear it nice on both sides, you can see, nice and charred, that's what you want to get, nice crisp outside. And I basted it, you see that? I basted it up. Typically, you want to let your meat rest for a few minutes. That lets the piece of that lets the piece of protein relax, the muscle, the blood goes back into throughout the piece of meat. Because when it's in the oven in that heat, or even on the pan, all that blood and everything is rushing in. It's getting tight. You need to let it rest and relax a little bit. See that? So. Nice piece of steak. Okay. Now's the test. Okay. The fork and knife test in my mouth. So, cutting that. Look at that. It's a nice medium rare. Nice and juicy. Tender, it's got that salt, the beef, it's so good. Let me just show you a little bit at the end of this. You see, it's going nice. I turned down my heat. I had a good amount of butter, don't be afraid. This is, this is your decadence. I'm going to baste it. What that's going to do is add some flavor. The butter's going to get burned while that, or brown. It's going to speed up the cooking process. I have some thyme, a little rosemary. Piece of garlic. Just crushed it. Throw that in. And we're off. One question people may have is, when when's it done? You know, right now you feel it. If it's really mushy, it's rare. The firmer it gets, the more cooked it gets. Think about time. A piece of steak like this for medium rare is going to take you about eight minutes, and then you'll let it rest, and then it's ready to go. So that's steak for today. Tune in to us next time. I'm Brian Fishstrong for Rayburn Live. Rayburn Lab.